There are so many different travel trailer RVs out there in the marketplace for you to explore. And there are a wide range of quality differences amongst different brands and types of RVs. This here would definitely be considered a entry level travel trailer RV. And I wanna talk about why we shouldn't always just overlook these as there are many reasons why somebody might be interested in a entry level travel trailer. So let's get into it. What's up y'all, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound and we are here at Blue Compass RV in Dallas, Texas today, taking a look at this new 2025 Forest River Aurora Light. This is actually the um, first look at the 2025 Forest River Aurora. First chance I have got to see a 2025 model. And this here is a 23 MKS. Um, floor plan layout and specs will be on the screen here if they are available online and they should be and you'll be able to see those there. Definitely a very popular floor plan layout. And real quick, before we get into this RV, I do wanna let you know, if you are interested in this RV or just interested in start looking, to start looking for your next RV, there's a link down below in the comments and description where you can find our 100 plus different stores across the United States. And goodness, lots of uh, noise pollution out here today, but uh, over a hundred different stores in 33 different states where you can shop for your next RV. So that link is down below in the comments and description if you're ready to start looking. And I do wanna mention real quick, turn this around. Um, you've heard me talk about Firmly Unbound a ton. I just ordered my first set of Firmly Unbound merchandise, which I am wearing here, that as of posting this video will either be, be available for purchase or available to pre-order in a very limited quantity. So if that's something you are interested in and you understand what Firmly Unbound is, like. Firmly Unbound is something where I don't want you to go buy the merchandise just because like I would appreciate your support and stuff like that. But I really would hope that um, if you've gone on my Firmly Unbound pages and understand kind of what the message is behind what Firmly Unbound is and what it means to live Firmly Unbound and you identify with that, that is something where I would hope that um, you would want to, you know, represent the idea that you live Firmly Unbound in wearing something that obviously says live Firmly Unbound on it. So I would appreciate your support there, but even more importantly, I think it'd be so cool if you actually um, understand what it means to live firmly unbound and would wanna wear this merchandise because you identify with what it means to live firmly unbound. So go check out those channels. Now let's get into this travel trailer here. We're gonna go hop inside and we're gonna talk a lot about um, different things on why you might want to consider an entry level travel trailer. And the first, the thing I have to talk about outside here before we go inside as well, is if you are just concerned about lippert frames in general. Um, on travel trailers, I don't think there's really much justification there for you to have that concern. To be honest, is there's just really no issues that I've seen with lippert frames on a travel trailer. Um, the only things we've seen related to frame failures over the past couple of years have been fifth wheels. So I wouldn't really be too concerned about that. But if that's something you just can't get your head over and you just you can't get your mind out of the state that like you shouldn't have a Lippert frame this does have a Norco frame on it so a different frame than Lippert they use a lot of huck bolt fasteners where a Lippert frame might use welds and those huck bolt fasteners are more solid than a weld so just something to keep in mind too with this travel trailer now as we come inside give you kind of a look around at the floor plan layout here um, definitely a great size travel trailer for a half ton truck at just 28 feet two inches 5,600 pounds unloaded. So definitely something where, you know, pretty much any half ton truck will be able to handle this, any modern half ton truck. Got the AC on in here. It is very cool, even though it's a very humid day here in Dallas after two straight days of rain. Um, so nice and cool in here. And you can kind of see the layout through this travel trailer. Now, as we go looking around through things, there's really a pretty deep conversation that can be had as to why someone might consider an entry level travel trailer. Cause I'm not gonna, you know, sugarcoat things to you when you step inside of this RV and especially somebody who's a more seasoned person being around RVs as I am, uh, you can tell that this is definitely, you know, an entry level travel trailer. There's not a whole lot that's super glamorous to it. It's not, especially for someone like me where I'm creating video content of these things on a daily basis. And I know people generally want to see like the most exciting stuff out there. That's what gets the most clicks. These entry level travel trailers, unless they've just come up with some new innovative floor plan that's never been done before, which this here is not, they just don't get a ton of attention. 
which I don't even know that they should. I don't, it's very difficult to justify why a entry level travel trailer should even get a ton of attention. But I think there's some important things to talk about with why someone might consider a trailer like this over something more expensive. First of all, I wanna get into like a financial breakdown on this travel trailer here because one of the big things with RV camping is I have to remind myself and I think even as a viewer, especially viewers that like to come in and just make like hasty comments for no reason, you have to understand everybody's at a different level of their experience with camping. Some people have been RVing for 10 years and some people have never owned an RV and this is just an idea that they had out of the blue that maybe they want to actually make a move on and see if it's something that they enjoy. So for a more seasoned RVer, I probably would not recommend an RV in most instances. However, there's a lot of instances where you might. Like here in Texas, there's a lot of deer lease properties out here and these campers are great to put on a deer lease. They're not too expensive. You can get something like this in the same brand with bunk beds and stuff if you need extra sleeping space. And it can be a camper that you just don't worry that much about. Um, but let me get back to the financial side on this. So this camper here that we're currently in, I don't think they have the price listed on it yet because I wasn't able to find it online. They just got this thing in. But my guess is it's gonna be around twenty five dollars to $30,000. Now, if that's the case, let's just say it's twenty six nine ninety seven. dollars Now for purchasing an RV, there's a couple things like you're gonna have taxes. In Texas, the sales tax on an item like this is six and a quarter percent. So that gets this right up to about $28,000. And then on top of that, you're probably going to need to spend about $1,000 on the additional parts and accessories that you need for your RV to function properly. Things like sewer hoses, water hoses, RVs don't come with that stuff. You have to purchase those additionally. Um, wheel blocks, leveling blocks, different things like that. It's safe to say that you might spend potentially about $1,000, especially if you need a weight distribution hitch, which you should have for towing safely. Um, all that said, easy to round up to. It comes down to like just under $30,000, um, but we'll round up to $30,000 to keep it simple. So then with financing an RV, which is how most people purchase them, but also not to skip over the fact, you can spend $30,000 out the door and just be done with it and have this camper paid in full. Now, if you wanna finance it, with RV financing, you usually need at least 10% down and sometimes up to 20% down depending on your credit. Should definitely mention that about a uh, 650 credit score tends to be the threshold where if you're below that, oftentimes you're gonna need a cosigner, something to keep in mind. But let's just say you put like somewhere around $4,500 down, which is kind of in between that 10 and 20%. Put $4,500 down, average interest rates, and I will be like very modest with this and say you might get a 10% interest rate right now on an RV that is because it's a recreational loan that is going to put you somewhere right around a, with $4,500 down and you get approved at 10%, that's gonna be right around, it's like $330 a month or so, I believe. Um, so, and just so you know, I'm not doing this all off the top of my head. I wrote all this down and then I started filming this and I left my phone in my truck, but I'm pretty sure I remember the numbers. It was right around $330 a month or so for 10 years. Now, 10 years can sound crazy, but you have to keep in mind, this is a starter camper. This is not meant to be a forever camper. This is not the camper you have for the next 10 years. This is the camper you use to figure out if you even like RV camping. So you can buy a camper like this, spend you know $4,500 up front, which I understand people might have to save up some money for some time to be able to do that. Shoot, I mean, even for me to do that, I have to save up money over time to be able to come in and do that. But this is for somebody that has spent that time, maybe they've been tent camping a couple times and they're like, okay, I like the idea of camping, but I want an AC, I want heat, I want to be able to have my own private bathroom, things like that, which is what a RV like this gives you. And then you're able to get out there and camp for about 330, <clears throat> to, or if you wanna do less money down, maybe $350 a month. Um, so that's where you're at. And then you might do that for a year, two years, three years, maybe, but most often, I mean, it's like 90% of people will either figure out that they don't actually RV camp as much as they would think and they get rid of the RV and they sell it, or they figure out they really like this experience and they want a little bit different layout. They maybe want a little bit more high-end camper because they are now seeing like 
the different things that they want in an RV now that they figured it out. And then you can go and trade this in and upgrade. So people do that with all kinds of things. But for some reason with campers, it's like, it's seen as like, I don't know, like you should just gloss over or skip over these entry level campers. But people do that with cars all the time. Very few people's first cars were a Lexus or a Mercedes or a BMW. But when they reach their 30s, 40s, or 50s, they have graduated up into those vehicles over time. There's nothing wrong with doing the same thing with campers. So um, that's kind of my spiel on why we shouldn't overlook these. And maybe this part of this is too, it's just justifying it to myself because sometimes I even want to overlook these because like I said, they just don't garnish that much excitement. But hopefully that helps some people out there. I know that was very long winded, but I think there's going to be at least a portion of people that will value that information. Um, and if you have questions or other further comments regarding things like that, definitely let me know down below in the comments and we can discuss it more. But we're gonna go through this floor plan layout real quick because gosh, I'm just, I'm getting annoyed of hearing myself talk, I'm so sorry. Um, right next to the entry door, outlets, USB ports right there, U-shaped dinette right here all the way across this wall. Um, I didn't check the width on this camper, but it feels like it's only a, it feels like it's a uh, seven foot wide camper. It doesn't feel like it's eight feet wide. This is the Aurora Light. So, um, but the dinette table here, nonetheless, giving you that U-shaped dinette, and this is going to drop down into a bed. It does have your cubby areas down underneath here. So legs can come out, drops onto these supports here, and then you have cushions along these back areas that will go on top of that to make it into a bed. You have these little kind of mesh balances on the windows, kind of help excess light bleed coming in from the sides, pull down black pleated shades here. Storage up above here. Ceiling height in this camper is six foot nine. It does have an AC with a heat pump in it. So that means you can actually get electric heat from your AC unit right there. And that is a GE profile AC. Really like that they're doing the um, love seat kind of seating here. It does have the flip down armrest, but I like this because if you have a pet or a spouse or whatever it may be and you want to cuddle up into this spot, that's definitely something you can do flipping up the armrest does have USB type C connections. Um, also some construction elements that just popped into my head. This does have a five eighths inch thick plywood subflooring underneath the floor here. And it is wrapped with a protective layer with a dark, uh, I think it was a dark coat protective layer is what it's called. But it has a protective layer over that flooring as well. Um, windows along this side, you have your pantry storage here. No slide or no carpet in the slide out either. So you can see that flooring there in the slide out does not have any carpet in it. And as I go through this, I mean, it's not, it's definitely not a terrible RV by any means. And I even think of somebody like my family, we have camped in, gosh, we've had seven different RVs now over the past 15, 16 years, however many years it may have been. And we've had RVs that are even, you know, smaller and about the same quality as this, even with, especially like pop-up campers. And then we've had campers just like this and we've had big fifth wheels. And each one of them kind of served their own purpose for the time being that we were looking at those RVs. And a lot of times it's just comes down to the financial side of it where you just don't want to or feel the need to spend a ton of money for a recreational hobby that you might not be doing, you know, all of that consistently, but still want to do nonetheless. Countertop here, this is a thermal foil countertop. And then you have storage space down underneath here. So really a decent amount of storage space in this floor plan layout. And keep in mind, if this isn't the floor plan layout for you, but what I'm talking about kind of resonates with the idea of, you know, maybe you don't need the most expensive RV. This brand, the Forest River Aurora, has dozens and dozens of different floor plan options out there. Nice large plastic sink. You have your three burner stove here. It does not have an oven, so giving you more storage space. I think that is definitely because this is designed as an RV for camping. Specifically, definitely not really designed for something to be lived in. Not to say you couldn't live in it if you want to try. And I certainly have met people that live in RVs like this or even smaller than this. So it is not outside of the realm of what's possible. But this is designed more for just like weekend camping trips or maybe like a three, four, five day long camping trip. Have your refrigerator there. And so that gets me to another point too. Um, you know, not everybody in their camping journey is at the point where they are doing like long 
expansive road trips. Um, if you're going to be doing a ton of long road trips, it might be better to like upgrade to an RV that has a more solid suspension system. And you'll probably have less likelihood of things, you know, inside the RV um, coming undone and stuff like that as you tow it down the road. Really nice pass-through bathroom here. But some people, like my family, like 95% of the camping that my parents do is within an hour of their house in Colorado. So they don't need all that stuff most often because they're just, the type of camping they do doesn't require it. So that's something to consider too. If you're early on in your RVing journey and you just plan to camp local or maybe you know only go a couple hundred miles away from home, you don't need something that crazy to get started and just figure out if this is something you want to do. Flip the camera around. Let me show you the ceiling height here in the shower. Always important. So for reference, without my shoes on, I'm six foot one. And you can see here, my head actually does not touch the ceiling at any point. Ceiling height here is probably about six foot two, six foot two and a half, and then about six foot four into this vent fan here. So actually a really good shower height for a travel trailer or a travel trailer in this class. Really enjoy that. Glad you don't have to duck under anything. And then the floor space here is just fantastic. I'm a big fan of these pass-through bathrooms because they really do offer a lot more floor space in here and offer the opportunity for them to put in a much larger shower. You have your sink here, plastic sink, storage space under there, and then hooks here to hang things. Then you have a sliding door going to the bedroom your bed in this space, and I'm probably just gonna have to lay in this bed to see what the dimensions are. It doesn't look like a true queen. They rarely are in trailers this size. Yeah, that feels like it's probably, I'm 73 inches long, so this is probably about 74, 75 inches long on that, just barely over, you know, six feet. So again, all things to keep in mind, you do have some added length here. If you do wanna put in a larger mattress, it'll just come further into that space. Storage underneath there. Storage here. And storage down underneath here. You have some nice shelving around the bed. The other thing to consider too with campers like this and campers in this uh, kind of class of RV, and when I say class of RV, I'm mostly talking about like an aluminum sided wood frame travel trailer, which is what this is. Outlets and USB ports on both sides of the bed. You also can get a lot more size of RV for your money. Spot for a TV right here. So although this one isn't terribly large, you can get travel trailers like this that are 30 plus, 30 plus feet long with separate bedrooms and things like that, um, separate bunk rooms for a fraction of the cost of what you can get those same size RVs for in a different RV brand. So that's another thing. If you just want more living space inside your RV for less money, these are also great brands to look at where you can get something in the $30,000 price range that is over 30 feet long and huge, whereas a lot of other brands in their $30,000 price range will be stuff that's actually in this size that is just a different tier of quality. So another thing to keep in mind. As we go on the outside, you can see the aluminum siding here. So all aluminum sidewalls. Um, the step up from something like this would be like a fiberglass sidewall over there. Those typically, but not always, will have aluminum framing on them. Some of these do have wood framing on certain brands. These here have wood framing throughout this camper. See your wheels here. Coming with a radial tire, a 205-75R14 tire. Has a pretty standard suspension. And again, that um, Norco frame from BAL. So not a lipper frame. Manual stabilizers down underneath. It does have an enclosed underbelly underneath there. So your water tanks and water lines are protected. Magnet latches to hold that door open and storage space through here. You can see the wood framing. Two propane bottles up front. Nice looking color scheme on this camper. Definitely goes great with a black truck, as you can see here. And then as we go to the other side, just real quick, you can see the slide out, the water connections and things like that. Um, like I said, it's a long conversation to be had about, you know, what camper is best for each individual. Um, there's just so many things that go into consideration for what is the best option for someone out there. But I want to make sure that on this channel, I'm not overlooking options like this for people that this makes sense to camp in. Um, I even could potentially be one of them. The only thing that kind of steers me away from something like this is I do such 
consistent long distance travel to go film RVs across the United States for y'all that I just think I would put too much stress on a camper like this with the amount of travel I do. But if I didn't do this as a profession and I just wanted something to go casually camp around Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas on the weekends, I don't know that I would look at something much more than what this is here. Like, I think this would be perfectly adequate, especially since I've never owned a camper myself before. My family has had many campers and specifically my dad is the one that does most of the stuff on the camper. So I know about the ownership experience through, you know, that kind of secondhand experience there and just handling customers that I've helped. But I wouldn't want to invest much more than this just to make sure that this is something I'm actually really committed to doing and I'm gonna do it enough to justify spending more money in the future. So all things to consider. Um, that's pretty much it though. Very curious your thoughts on what you think and definitely add your own comments about this topic down below. And that's all I got for y'all. Again, don't forget to go check out. There is now Firmly Unbound merchandise for the first time ever. So this will be on the Firmly Unbound website. You can go check that out. And there's gonna be very, very limited quantity of these available as this is the very first run of me getting Firmly Unbound merchandise. And if that's something that you identify with, I would love for or I'd love to see y'all at some RV shows and stuff like that wearing a Firmly Unbound shirt, so go check those out. There's also stickers that I will um, probably be giving people for free as well if you order a shirt right now that are Firmly Unbound stickers. And I also forgot to mention, uh, Hershey RV Show is gonna be going on soon. I don't know if it will be going on as of me posting this video or if this will get up before the Hershey RV Show, but that'll start September 11th. I will be there. If you see me at that show, definitely make sure to say hi because I'll have stickers on me there too and people that I interact with, I'll be handing out free Firmly Unbound stickers at that show. So that's all I got for y'all. If you're interested in your next RV, there's a link down below in the comments and description. And until next time, live Firmly Unbound.